Hello everyone, Loremaster of Sotek here, back with another video focusing on the things that I think need to be either changed or brought to Total War Warhammer. And these are all, of course, just meant to be ideas that I've got rattling around in my head. I'm not trying to act like I'm kind of any super god tier authority or some bullshit on this uh, game or hobby or whatever you want to call it. Uh, these are just things that I noticed were missing or things that I think could be changed for the better. And ultimately, I'd love to hear what y'all think on it. I mean, frankly, y'all's opinion is just as valid as mine is when it comes to ideas on how to implement or repair or alter something. So feel free to throw in your thoughts as we get into this video. But what is today's subject? I'm sure you've already noticed by the thumbnail and title. But today we're talking about mounts. And I don't mean the kind of mount with Ilarial and Tyrion, I mean the actual epic battle kind. The creatures or objects that we ride into battle to smash our foes aside with and engage in epic monstrous duels and all that other nonsense. So in any event, there is actually a shocking number of mounts that are not missing from the game. In fact, they're already in the game. They're just not available to us as players due to some coding issues or some weird implementations by Creative Assembly. And it's high damn time that we fix it because a lot of these characters that we're gonna talk about, I think could be made substantially more enjoyable and epic if they had access to the things they're supposed to have access to. So that's where we're gonna start. And then towards the end of the video, we're actually going to talk about mounts that are indeed missing from the game, which there's actually probably not as many as you would suspect, especially considering we're only going to be talking about the factions we have in game. So I'm not going to be touching anything that is not currently in the game. So first and foremost, I'm going to start with something that is probably going to catch everyone a little off guard because it's not technically a missing mount, but I do think it bears being spoken about and this is a campaign only issue, I think. And that is Thorgrim. That's right, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, the High King of the Dwarves, up on the Throne of Power. So here's my issue. The Throne of Power, as it currently exists, is extremely boring. It doesn't really do anything. Like, Thorgrim's kind of up there, you know, he's pretty difficult to stagger and he's pretty heavy. He's got some solid mass and all that jazz. But ultimately, he doesn't have any of the real benefits of actually riding the throne of power into combat. Because the throne of power, for those who may be unaware, is actually one of the most powerful quote unquote mounts in all of Warhammer Fantasy. Like, it's a big deal. It has a lot of really incredible powers. It thoroughly expands Thorgrim's uh, leadership area of effect. It makes his armor insanely high. It gave him an incredible ward save. All sorts of, like, fun things. And granted, some of the things have been implemented properly. You know, it gave him a significantly higher number of wounds, which they've already done that in Total War where, you know, he has a very high health profile and his armor is pretty good. It's pretty good. But where's my ward save? You know, where's, where is the rune of Azamar awakening and kicking in the, the barrier that protects Thorgrim and all the high kings before him from the disastrous powers of destruction? So I think it's high time that Thorgrim is given a skill in his skill tree that should be called the Rune of Azamar or the Rune of Azamar Awakened or Empowered, something like that. And basically what this would represent is you fully awakening the power of the Throne of Power and it actually gives you the defenses that you would expect from such a incredible artifact. And what I was thinking is that you could probably put it along the top of Thorgrim's skill tree and maybe like at level 15 or level 20, it's automatically unlocked. So, you know, just like how for all other characters, their mounts automatically unlock at the appropriate level. Well, let's have the Throne of Power automatically upgrade at a certain level for Thorgrim. And what I would advise it giving him 
is I would say give him barrier. So it gives him the barrier effect. So he gets a bunch of bonus extra hit points, uh, essentially. And I would also recommend that it could either improve his leadership skills a little more, you know, maybe make the aura a little more powerful or alternatively just give him like maybe a little ward save on top of his barrier to just really, really be like, look how tanky this lad is. You know, maybe like a five or 10% ward save and then it gives him like a thousand or 2000 hit points and barrier or something. Uh, but I think that would really help Thorgrim stand out on the throne of power and give it the feel that it's supposed to have like he's supposed to be damn near unkillable up on that thing and it just it just doesn't really give me that feeling these days you know it's kind of it's all right it's there it's it's nothing that i feel super inclined to write home about a part of me also thinks that it should have a shielding like a bronze shield or a silver shield because i mean everything about it is so heavily armored and even the throne bearers are, they have shields in one of their hands and they're fully decked out in armor and Thorgrim is heavily decked out in armor and he's on this big, very, very hard to arm in any way, um, you know, platform. Like Thorgrim really is barely, ex him and the shield bearers are both barely exposed to most forms of missile fire. So it might, I don't know, I, I could see in multiplayer, like just his base profile uh, for multiplayer and campaign, like I would probably say it'd be fair to give Thorgrim a bronze shield. I don't think he has anything like that right now, but I think it'd be reasonable. In any event though, that's it for Thorgrim. Let's move on. The next thing is something you may have heard about or even seen in game. And that is that there's actually a chariot model that exists in game that the AI can use, but we, the player cannot, unless you're playing uh, custom battles or multiplayer, in which case you can use it, which is that the goblin big boss and the goblin great shaman, I believe, have the goblin wolf chariot, which they should. That is, they did have access to that in tabletop, and that's something they should absolutely have access to in this game. It gives them another tier of mounts. You know, for the Bo Goblin Big Boss, it gives them something a little bigger than just a regular giant wolf. And for the Shaman, it adds a tier between the giant wolf and the Arachnorok spider. So I am full on board with that. You know, give us our Goblin Wolf Chariots. But currently they are unavailable in campaign. So please, like they seem to be fully functioning. We just need to have the actual unlock added into campaign. So, you know, CA, please, if you would, uh, let's get those Goblin Wolf Chariots up and running uh, for campaign. To go along with that, there's also the Orcs. Just like Goblin characters can ride Wolf Chariots, Orc characters can ride Boar Chariots. Granted, not all the characters can. For instance, the Night Goblin War Boss cannot ride a wolf chariot, neither can the night goblin uh, shaman. But the uh, same thing kind of goes for the orcs where the orc shamans cannot ride boar chariots, but the orc war boss can ride a boar chariot and so can the black orc big boss. And once again, that just adds another fun tier. So that would give the orc war boss a, a something a little more heavy between the boar and the wyvern and for the Black Orc Big Boss, that would just add a new upper tier to what mounts he would have available. So, you know, I think those would be great to have. So let's, you know, let's get our chariot mounts for all of our different characters. Uh, they've actually been pretty good about making sure that all the characters in the game have access to the chariot mounts they should have access to based on their tabletop profiles. But for whatever reason, orcs and goblins fell through the cracks on that one. So... I would definitely say, let's let's do it. Now's the time, you know, let's get those uh, orc chariots and those goblin chariots up and running. Moving on from the green skins, but still focusing on things from tabletop that should have access to a mount that is in game, but they don't. Let's talk about the elves. So the high elves and the dark elves have two a character each that is actually missing a mount. Now, I honestly think the reason they're missing these mounts is maybe due to balance reasons, but I don't think that's a good enough excuse, frankly, because the factions aren't that overpowered uh, by any means of the imagination. They actually seem to be struggling in quite a few multiplayer formats. And uh, in campaign, like who cares if it's balanced in campaign? It's fun, like who, nobody cares. 
so the mounts that we're missing are actually for the dark elf noble or sorry the dark elf master and the high elf noble and the things that we're missing is that the high elf noble is supposed to have access to the griffin mount so the griffin is supposed to be the highest tier mount for the high elf noble whereas the master of the dark elves is supposed to be able to ride the manticore and that is his highest tier mount because the elves kind of one of the big things with elves is that they have a just massive catalog of creatures they can ride and their heroes are able to ride monstrous creatures which is rather unique compared to most other factions you know not that many factions have access to monsters uh, at their hero tier but the elves are among them so you know they're already in the game they already are ridden by characters in those factions we just need to add the master and the noble to that list you know the high elves have griffins that can be ridden by princes and princesses but you don't tend to see them very often you know most people go for dragons because the dragons are the tier above that so you know the high elf noble is perfect to have the griffin because you'd be more likely to actually see griffins on people besides just eltharian because you go oh finally you know i've reached the griffin tier and same thing kind of for the dark elf master you know the manticores are out there you don't see to you don't tend to see them a ton because most people go all the way up to the black dragon but giving it to the master just you know just adds a whole nother layer to things and it also allows those characters to perform in much different roles you know they become significantly better at dueling with larger threats or plowing through certain kinds of units but you know it's gonna be fairly expensive uh but give it to them i say give it to them the last thing that we need to talk about as far as a tabletop mount that is missing from the game but uh, exists in Total War, just hasn't been fairly or evenly applied yet, is actually with the Warriors of Chaos. So in Chaos, who just got a big lovely update, there was a bit of a unevenness in the update, which I think some people may have noticed. And it's that not all four of the Chaos powers were treated equally. They kind of, they kind of finagled a system to get them all access to some toys without giving them access to all their toys. For instance, how we have a Chaos Lord of Corn and Slanesh, but we do not have a Chaos Sorcerer Lord of um, Slanesh. But we do have a Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle and Zinch, but we don't have a regular Chaos Lord of Nurgle. Same, th And then it goes to the heroes as well, where Corn and Zinch got their heroes, but uh, Nurgle is missing his Sorcerer hero, and Slanesh is missing his exalted hero. So, you know, it, there's been kind of some unevenness there, and that actually did carry over into the mounts, where Zinch and Korn got access to unique mounts for their marked characters. So when you're playing with a exalted hero of Korn, you work your way up to a Juggernaut as your big bad mount. And when you're playing with Zinch, uh, for the sorcerer characters, technically they go all the way up to a, a technically they go all the way up to a gosh my brain, a chaos shrine. But uh, you know they have the disc of Zinch as their really cool unique mount that offers some unique benefits, being a flyer. But Slanesh and Nurgle didn't get anything. They kind of got left behind. They don't have any kind of god specific mount. You know they both have access to chariots but they're just normal chariots that are pulled by horses and they uh, some of their characters have access to war shrines uh, but they don't really have anything super special and the big thing for Slanesh in, Slanesh in particular surprised me because Slanesh has some really cool options for instance we see with the Regiment of Renown Chaos Chariot the Regiment of Renown Chaos Chariot for Slanesh is pulled by Steeds of Slanesh so why not have the Slanesh chariot for the characters pulled by Steeds of Slanesh? Or why not just have a Steed of Slanesh option, just like you do with the Marauders? Uh, I think either of those would be great and would look really cool. Um, I'm really, really surprised that we didn't get either of those options with Slanesh. Those seemed very simple to do. Um, maybe they have a future plan where they're doing something else. Uh, I don't know what it would be though. Uh, and then a similar thing to Nurgle. Nurgle actually only has one option in tabletop that is unique, which is the palanquin, which the Nurgle palanquins do exist in the game. Uh, they could be taken by the uh, Nurgle demon characters. 
So the Nurgle demon, uh, the, the Nurgle Herald of Nurgle and the Plague Bringer? I forget what the hero's name is, but both of them do actually have the Palanquin of Nurgle option. So it's in the game, it just hasn't been adjusted to allow a uh, exalted hero of Nurgle or a Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle to ride it. Even though that was a mount for them in tabletop as well, because that was the mount that Nurgle gave to those who bore his blessings. Um, unfortunately, uh, so those, you know, would be really nice to see. Uh, I mean, the Palanquin, it's, it's kind of a funky mount, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not particularly fast, but it gives you... You know, it gives you a bit more mass and uh, a lot more health and some stuff like that and could give you some benefit benefits for having Nurglings drag you around. Um, I don't think it's a mount people tend to see terribly often because you're usually on your way to be riding on plague drones, which, you know, there's also the plague drone. They could do plague drones. Uh, we never saw a mortal character in Warhammer Fantasy ride on plague drones, but in Age of Sigmar, there are tons of characters that ride on plague drones. Uh, there's even a generic unit, which are the Pus Goyles, and there is a ge generic lord, uh, which I cannot remember his name. Uh, it's like a putrid, I, I can't remember what his title is. There's a lot of random characters now, but uh, in any event, I would love to see either of those options, either the Palanquin of Nurgle or the Plague Drone of Nurgle. Uh, I think those would all make for excellent mounts. So if CA could, I, I just, I really wanna see them. You know, there, there's a chance there might be some future content down the road and maybe they'll come back to Slanesh and Nurgle and give us some goodies. Uh, we could always maybe see Demonic Steeds added to the game. I would love to see Demonic Steeds. You know, they've done such a good job with Dorger where now Dorger is this massive hulking creature and he doesn't, you, you can tell he's not a horse, he's something other, you know? So I would love to see Demonic Steeds be made kind of a normal thing, you know, have the undivided Demonic Steed and then a Demonic Steed for each of the four powers. Uh, that could be really fun. Alternatively, uh, there's the Rot Beast from Tarmacon for Nurgle. That could be really cool. Rot Beasts are kind of like, uh, they're kind of like uh, Nurgly Velociraptor things. Um, they're they're kind of like a mix between a cold one and a, oh, some, I don't know, plague horse thing, but they're nasty looking. But um, any of those would be really cool. I just, I don't know. I kind of feel bad that Nurgle and Slanesh sort of didn't quite, make it across the gap so to speak but uh, i am sincerely hoping that at some point we will come back to the warriors of chaos uh, not anytime super soon but at some point because they are still missing quite a bit of content uh they're still missing a good handful of monsters they're missing uh some mounts as we've talked about they're missing a number of characters like we've talked about where uh slanesh and nurgle and corn or uh, corn has everything but zinch nurgle and slanesh are technically missing characters um, but, uh, then again, that would probably be addressed through mono God stuff, not warrior of chaos stuff, because like, I would be fine at this point, like seeing, oh, there's a Nurgle or Slanesh or Zinch DLC on the horizon, but I, I don't want to see another warrior of chaos DLC for a hot while. Um, you know, hopefully the monster issue is addressed through the, I would love to see the monster issue addressed through like a monster DLC, uh, because really I, I think the warriors of chaos there, I, I would say they're, they're pretty comfortable. Um, right now, you know, most of the other issues I think could be addressed through mono god stuff, but uh, I don't know That's a discussion we might say for another time one mount that I actually nearly forgot about because it's been kind of so long since I was digging around in All of the various army books is that much like the high elf noble writing on the griffin and the dark elf master writing on the manticore There is a third member of the club of character that is allowed to ride on a monster but isn't able to do it in Total War Warhammer 3. And that is actually the Tomb Prince. Normally when I focus on the Tomb King characters, I'm normally just bitching and moaning about the horses, the skeletal steeds, uh, not being something they should be allowed to ride on for lore reasons, because there's a whole thing about that. But in any event, the Tomb Prince actually in tabletop for eighth edition Warhammer Fantasy, when the Cimmerian War Sphinx was introduced, was able to ride one. Uh, the Tomb Kings and the Tomb Princes had access to all the same mounts. Now, there's a part of my brain that says, oh, well, maybe they left this out because they wanted the monstrous mount to be kind of unique to the Tomb King and make the Tomb Prince feel a little more low tier. But my counter argument for that is that, well, no, because if they were going to do that, they should have done it consistently. And they haven't been consistent about it. There are numerous factions 
where there is a monstrous mount that can be taken by heroes. A prime example is the Lizardman. The Sora Scar veteran can ride Carnosaurs, and the Skink Priest can ride Stegodons. Like, there are all sorts of monstrous mounts for hero tier characters. Uh, the Warriors of Chaos are able to get Manticores on all of their heroes. So I don't understand the argument for not allowing some of these characters to ride on these big bad beasties. So along with all of the other uh, mounts that I'm talking about in today's video, I we should add the Kimrian War Sphinx to the Tomb Prince. I don't see any reason not to have him up there just like we do with the Tomb King. And this one should be insanely easy to do because I what are, I don't know what exactly the differences are as far as like the models and everything are concerned between the Tomb King and the Tomb Prince, but it is not much because they are practically identical in a number of ways. So uh, yeah, go ahead and tack this onto the list of monstrous mounts we need on our heroes and it's already in game. So come on, CA, you can do this, get this done. In any event, uh, I actually am gonna go ahead and call the video there just cause this took a little longer than I thought. Uh, I'll make the uh, mounts I'd like to see added to the game in the future into a separate video. But in any event, uh, I hope this is interesting. Let me know what y'all think down below. Are there any of these that, uh, let, give me a rating system. So I gave y'all what, like six or seven different mounts. Uh, give me give me like a rating from, uh, from, you know, put them in order of which one you think is the most integral needs to be done and the one that you could like wait the longest for or, or are there any that i missed that you can think of i, I think i got everything but there, you know there's damn good chance i may have missed something but uh, in any event uh let me know down in the comment section and i'll see you guys around thanks for watching Bye bye